I'm good. You guys can hear me? All right. Hello. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'll go ahead and get started. So thanks, everyone, for coming to my talk. I'm here to tell you about the marketing team's hopes and dreams and a few updates as well as we go along. So I appreciate that. Um, I think there's a lot of exciting stuff in here, so like, I feel like we've been kind of like very, very chill. So if anything is exciting to you here, please feel free to be like, whoa, yippee, you know, something. Just to be like, yeah, this is an awesome thing because I think that Fedora right now is, is, is in a place where um, like we've seen a lot of growth, we've seen a lot of popularity, all these positive things, and I feel like we're also now capitalizing on that to make um, important and valuable strategic decisions for the future of the distro and, and for the future of Linux as well. So uh, to start us off, I wanted to introduce the marketing team uh, more broadly. So these are uh, some of the main folks who are involved in the team today. We have Justin, who, a little round of applause for Justin for obviously everything for Flock. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for that. Um, but um, when it comes to the marketing team, he's been uh, a regular member of that, um, helping with the uh, Twitter and LinkedIn accounts, as well as generally providing uh, advice and guidance for marketing team initiatives. Uh, we also have our two outreachy interns, which also thanks to Justin for them. They're not online because they uh, both live in Nigeria, <laughs> so it's very late over there. If they're online, then like, thank you, you didn't have to do that. Uh, <laughs> but. Yes, Rosalind and Tosin, and we're going to get into some of the stuff that they've done that has been very value added. Um, we, they are our interns through Outreachy, which is a program that we're very grateful for, um, and they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, Damar, uh, he um, hasn't been able to contribute as much lately, but he's still been such an integral part. If you've seen any of the fancy graphics that we've had on our social media or um, on our Instagram, that's been a lot driven by him, and he's helped us to have a kind of consumer focus. Um, and a few other folks like uh, Eric Hendricks, he does the Fedora podcast, and McKinney, she's helped us with the Instagram. And there have been lots of other people who've come and, and helped and collaborated in different ways. Um, for myself, uh, my name is Joseph Galloso. You may see me around uh, under Joseph of Earth. That usually go by that icon um, and not my face. I've been using Linux uh, for two years, and I pretty quickly got plugged into Fedora. Uh, so I've been a member of the marketing team for about the same amount of time. Um, from a day-to-day -day perspective, I'm primarily helping to run the Fedora Mastodon account. Um, but I'm also involved in brand management and public relations for the project. Um, I sometimes dabble in product management when it's something that I feel that the marketing team has to dip our, our toes into it. Um, I've been involved in a lot of the hardware vendor uh, relationships and collaborations, which we'll get to a little later on as well. Um, and then also to speak to my technical ability, um, if something goes wrong on my computer, I probably just didn't reinstall Linux. So, <laughs> so if, um, if there's something where it's like, oh yeah, you just gotta like run this script or like enter this command, it's like a 50-50 chance I'm just reinstalling. So <laughs> that's like my one trick. Besides that, I'm not very technical. I'm still not sure what SSH is, so you guys kind of know where I'm coming from. Um, so I also wanted to start just more generally, what is Fedora, right? It's just important for something like a marketing team to understand um, because it means different things to different people who are coming across this brand. And so we have to understand what that means for our users, for our contributors, for potential vendors, all, you know, all kinds of folks. Primarily, Fedora is Fedora Linux. It's an operating system. It releases every six months. It's got up-to-date packages, and sometimes um, it's a little too fast for some folks, but uh, generally speaking, it's good. Um, as of now, it's one of the top distros you can choose, and we're very excited about that. Um, but it's also not just Fedora Linux. It's made up of several different distributions. Um, we know most of them, but you know, there's the list at the bottom of the website you can get to every time. Fedora Workstation is what we know best. Fedora KDE is also up there as a solid uh, desktop environment to use. There's also the server use case, which we cover with server, CoreOS, IoT, and cloud. We have all of our atomic desktops. They're grouped together, and obviously we'll get more into that when it comes to bootable containers and what have you. Um, all of our spins and then all of our labs. So you can see there's a mix of what we do for uh, client computing and what we do for, for server-based stuff. And we're also sponsored by Red Hat, so thank you, Red Hat. 
besides that, it's not just software. We're made up of people. So we have our four foundations. We have freedom, features, friends, and first. Um, I won't go into it for the sake of time because I think all of us, you know, I think we're very lucky that Fedora is a project where we actually take our core values seriously, uh, but we want to make sure that uh, our software is free to use and uh, however you want, that it has the latest cutting edge features because we're excited about innovation, um, that we are first in, in trying those things and not just waiting for things to develop, and also that we do put our focus on our friends, the people around us, the community, because that's what it's here for. I mean, we're doing the software for the people, so we have to make sure that we're thinking of each other along the way. So let's dive into social media. We'll have uh, lots of different things to cover, but um, we'll, we'll take, e take each in its own section. And we'll start with the Mastodon account. This is the one that I know the best because I run it. Uh, we're at about 15,000 followers right now, which is uh, pretty great. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. I don't think that number's a given, and so um, I'm, I'm happy about it. Uh, the way that I've been trying to gauge where we're at with the Mastodon, and that could be its own talk, but the way that I've been trying to gauge it is um, this kind of like rings of, of you know, what does Fedora have that is similar to other things near it. And so the first ring was, okay, well, how do we stack up against other Linux distros? As last time I checked, the Debian Mastodon account was the most followed Mastodon account, and we beat them a while ago. They're at 12,000, we're at 15,000, so that's great. What's the next ring? Well, uh, Linux open source software, not a distro specifically, but maybe something that crosses distros. And so my next target is beating GNOME. They're at 16,000 followers, and so hopefully we will beat them. After that, it'll be KDE. That's gonna take a while. There are like 22,000 <laughs> followers. Uh, but that's just to give a little insight into uh, how I've thought about growing our Mastodon account. Um, that's kind of what I consider to be our flagship presence from a social media standpoint. We get a ton of great feedback and engagement, and. Like I said, I could spend an hour talking about how we do our Mastodon, but I put a lot of work into making sure that that's an opportunity for Fedora, not just to broadcast out to the community, but to also engage and participate in the community, be a good representative of everyone that's behind the Fedora brand. We have Twitter, <laughs> so that's on the, maybe on the opposite end, depending on who you ask, um, which is not as active, but it is kept up somewhat. That's intentional. Um, we're just strategically deciding where we want to spend our time. So sometimes we will get posts out there, but as you can see, we kind of are pointing folks to the Mastodon. Um, and it's there, it's stable, it, you know, it's not really moving much in terms of follower account. Uh, count. Um, LinkedIn is one that I don't know if you we were paying attention to beforehand, but we have since. We're at 31,000 followers now. Um, that's exciting because I think it's a, a social media that's a little more amenable. It's a little more flexible when it comes to having other people help us with managing LinkedIn. Um, and generally, it does well. And there's a different demographic on LinkedIn compared to Mastodon, so um, that part's valuable for us. The Instagram has 10,000 followers. That's, I don't know how recently we hit that, but I'm glad that we have hit that nice round number. Um, it has cooled down lately. That was the account mainly that Daymar was running. Um, so we will get into some of the opportunities and challenges from a social media standpoint that we're dealing with, but it's there and it has some great graphics. So we're very grateful for that and, and hope to, to revitalize that as well. Facebook is not exactly in a similar boat, but somewhat. Um, some of what has been posted to the Instagram has gone over to the Facebook, but really the Facebook has relied on the connection to the Instagram account. And so it, it has not had the same level of curation, the same level of community engagement. If something goes on the Facebook and you reply, probably no one saw it. If you reply to the Mastodon, I saw it. And so there's that difference in care that we want to try to remedy over time. Uh, the YouTube account, that'll come up again later, but they do have a community page. That's also something that Damar was helping us with, and I've tried to keep up a little bit, but that's been um, one of my struggles as we've gone through it. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers, which is great, and the YouTube account, for various reasons, has a lot more room to go. So, um, the, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. What about other social medias, right? What about my social media? What about this other one? There's so many that we can go to. Um, Blue Sky and Threads is on our radar. Uh, there will likely not be any movements anytime soon. Blue Sky, I think, it has its pros and cons, but I'm not sure from a popularity perspective if it's worth us investing the extra energy. Um, well, go ahead, I'll, I'll do Q&A at the end. I wanna try to like get through everything and then I'll, I'll, I'll try to come back, but thank you for that, I appreciate it. 
Threads is kind of in a holding pattern because they are trying to do work with integrating into the Fediverse, but depending on the pace at which they do that work and what kind of connection we get, we may or may not make a Threads account in my personal opinion. My ideal world is we have the Mastodon account and you connect to Fedora from through the Fediverse to the Mastodon account, but if they take forever or if there isn't like feature parity, we may end up on Threads directly. Uh, Discord and Reddit, they are technically social media, but obviously it's not broadcast social media. This is more community spaces. And we do have community members who participate in those spaces, but we don't really have folks who are monitoring those spaces in terms of like vibes monitoring, right? So like having an idea of like what is going on, what are people saying, collecting feedback and being familiar. Uh, no one on the marketing team is currently paying close attention to that, but that is a far off goal that I would have for us from a social media perspective. Thank you to Rosalind for this graphic. It does a great job of detailing how we currently structure our approach to social media management. Um, it might be a little small, so I apologize for that, but I'll walk through it. Uh, you basically have a little cake there uh, of different tiers at which people will be contributing to uh, regular social media posts on our social media. So um, at the top there, you have what we've called uh, the account lead slash curator. So this is basically like you dive right into the social media platform. You're the main point of contact for it, but you are actively looking for content, looking for creative ways to engage with people, doing it in an in, in, uh, earnest and, and honest way, uh, not ignoring negative feedback, but also knowing how to go about that as well. Um, and, and, and so you do the work of doing everything you can to get to know how that social media platform works and how the community on that platform operates. Um, I would say that as of right now, it's just the Mastodon with myself that's operating at that level. Uh, then under that, we have an account contributor role, which you are still the point of contact for that social media, but there's not the same expectation to where you're like thinking about like, you know, what hashtag should I be using and how should I format the hashtags and what pinned posts do we currently have? You're not thinking at that level. It's more occasionally if you know something needs to get out, you're getting it out. And if someone has something for you, they can give it to you and then you can post it. Those top two layers, you can see they're connected by the social media manager's section, and the reason for that is because they both require trust. This will be a theme. Part of the challenge with the marketing team is finding folks who not only know Fedora well enough to be able to talk about it and engage, but also know how to be spokespeople for a brand and know how to you know, interpret feedback from the community and, and, and what to do with that, how to engage positively, when to withhold, that kind of thing. And uh, so we just can't give social media credentials to anyone. We have to be able to trust the people. And so that's why the social media managers exist. Under that, you have content contributors and community contributors. So content contributors are basically folks who, who do want to engage. They're part of the marketing team or they, they want to be. And so they have ideas for things that can be posted. But for whatever reason, you know, maybe they're new to the project, maybe they're new to the team, you know, there may be a reason for why they're not trusted enough to have access to the social media, maybe. Maybe all of our, this isn't the problem today, but there could be a time where we do have an account lead for every major social media platform, and so we don't need to have additional people with credentials when they can just go to that one point of contact. They, the content contributor, will develop content and basically tee it up for either the account contributor or the account lead to then post. Um, so this is what many of our outreachy applicants did. When they were uh, reaching out through the application phase, they were like, hey, I want to help with the social media. And I'm like, OK, well, draft up a post for me. They went ahead and found something interesting to talk about. And they're like, hey, uh, let's talk about CoreOS. Here's something interesting about CoreOS, let's say. Uh, here you go. And then it was just me copying, editing, and maybe, and then sending it out. That's what that pipeline looked like. For most of us, and so this is my invitation for anyone who isn't part of the marketing team but does have things that they want to get out through our social media channels, you guys are at the community contributor level. You could also think of this as the drive-by, the drive-by contr contribution, where you're just coming into our matrix chat. You don't got to make a ticket or anything. You just come on in and say, hey, I, I, you know, I have a new spin. It's coming out in Fedora 41. Can we make sure this gets some level of marketing support? Um, I have this cool new thing that I'm working on. I have this thing, and, and this is why I think it would be valuable. And nine times out of 10, we will be happy to do that. If you tell me and come into our marketing team chat, hey, I have something for you to post, I will grab that and post it and save whatever article I was going to post about for tomorrow. 
you just made my life easier by giving me content that I can start storing for my backlog. So we're grateful for that. And we want to make sure that that's accessible. That's how a lot of you know, recent contributions of you know, getting more stuff out there about Fedora KDE. Uh, and, uh, or Fedora Cosmic, or uh, if there's like a you know a latest version of a certain package, we get it out through there because folks let us know that it's available. Fedora Asahi as well, they do a great job of jumping in our chat, let us know what's new, and we get it out. So we already touched on this a little bit, but the opportunities that we have are we have a lot of social media channels that we can turn more active. Um, we have a model by which people can start contributing that does you know uh, give us the flexibility we need based on trust. And we have a ton of growth to explore. The challenge is in finding contributors and training them. It goes back to that piece of having someone who is balanced enough, they, they know what they're talking about, and they also know how to be a spokesperson. So this is a big group here, but brand management, product management, and public relations. I'll go through what I'm, do, what I'm talking about with each of these. Uh, for brand management, uh, it's important to understand you know, what should Fedora stand for, what does Fedora stand for, and then more generally, what does Fedora represent? Um, so what should Fedora stand for? That's talking about like the ideal, right? So the four foundations, Fedora Linux, all of our different spins, and you know, having good answers to the questions for why these things exist. Uh, but another important question is what does Fedora stand for currently in the mind of the people who are thinking about you know, jumping on Fedora or are currently using Fedora or are just outside observers, people who don't even know what Fedora is. So this is where you have to acknowledge some of the criticisms that we may get or some of the baggage that we have to deal with because of things that happen. <laughs> so, but it's important to have an accurate understanding of that, not only for responding, but sometimes for receiving feedback and then doing something with it later. Uh, and then who does Fedora represent? This is another piece where the spokesman thing comes up. It would not be good if you had access to a Fedora social media account and then you talk about how great GNOME is and how KDE is bad. <laughs> That's not good. Why? Because Fedora, the Fedora project, is made up of community members who have many opinions uh, about free software and, and other things. But uh, we have to be, you have to acknowledge not only your audience, but also the people who you're representing and make sure that you're not doing so in a way that is um, biased or disrespectful. I mentioned GNOME and KDE, but you could just as well put in there AI, you could just as well put in there any kind of controversial subject that's happening in open source. Um, and you have to know when is the time to say something and when is the time to be quiet out of respect for the difficulty or uh, challenge of the situation. It's coming up. <laughs> so uh, voice of the brand as well. Again, you have to know not only like being a good spokesperson, but also understanding uh, some of the other finer things, like how does the brand talk, right? Like the Fedora brand, if you follow the Mastodon, we don't normally talk like, oh, we're, if Fedora Linux is the most super duper awesome. Like, no, I think, I think we have a good balance. This is maybe me, you know, I'm biased, right? Because that's me posting. but. We try to have a good balance of being excited about what we're doing while also believing that there is reason to be excited about that um, and also being open to the fact that we're not perfect and also not uh, burying other projects that are out there. So that's been very explicit. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll highlight because the, the Ultramarine team is here, but they've been very, I've been very grateful that they were receptive to some of the things that we've done. And, and I see, you know, different examples of that come up with other open source products that we've interacted with online. I, 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 we want a vibe, right? Like the Friends Foundation is not just within the Fedora community. From a marketing standpoint, that extends to other open source projects as well. And so I, I, I do make it a point to keep that in mind. Product management. I'm not actually the project manager or product manager for anything. I just stick my nose in occasionally <laughs> when I think that it's something that needs attention. Sometimes it's an opportunity. Sometimes it's an, uh, an issue or a challenge. Uh, Fedora Cosmic is one opportunity. Some folks are saying, hey, Cosmic is a thing. Will there be a spin? Will there not be a spin? Um, when I saw that chatter and I saw that it came from someone who was credible, when, when, when you are at that curator level and you're regularly aware of the discussions that are happening, you can start to see what is an opportunity for me to come in and use the, uh, how, how do I say it? You can have a very positive impact in someone's life, whether personally or from a contribution perspective, with how you use the official presence of a brand on a social media platform. 
right? Sometimes it could be something small like, hey, I love using Fedora. And then you saw Fedora liked your post. What? You know, you just did your, 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 your crazy wallpaper with the Neo fetch and it's looking all cool. And then what? Like it's on our framework and you got boosted. That's cool. And I want that for you. I want you to feel cool because it is cool. And I'm grateful that you did it. And I, I like that you like my thing and I like your thing. And so we want to do that. Um, but uh, more than that, more strategically, sometimes you can use social media to encourage contributions. Um, it's not always about recruiting. Sometimes it could be helpful nudges along the way. Fedora Cosmic started like that. It started with a discussion happening on Mastodon. And so me being informed and plugged in with the rest of the community, I was able to chime in through the Mastodon account and say, hey, that would be a cool thing. You know, would you be interested in making that? <laughs> not directly, but uh, informally through those discussions. And then afterwards, following up from my personal account on our forum. That's what some of that support has looked like. Sometimes it'll look like what happened with Fedora Atomic Desktops. That's a brand that there was a discussion about whether or not we should make that move. That cooled down because it got very hectic. Then I brought it back. And I said, hey, I think it is time. Let's go ahead and make this happen. And so we took it from reintroducing the idea all the way through a product launch with reaching out to media outlets. Um, and, and ultimately, we got a lot of people to start changing how they talk about Silver, Blue, and Friends. People aren't confused as much anymore. Folks aren't saying immutable when they're talking about our PMOS tree-based systems. They're saying Fedora Atomic. And that's uh, a, a, an important distinction that needed to be made for the evolution of this space um, and also a success in terms of our ability to get people to start using the language that we want them to use because it's more accurate and in line with what the technology actually does. Sometimes there are not so great things that still need to be addressed. And if you've been on Mastodon or, or seen different discussions that are happening, accessibility is one of those things. That's something that I'm currently involved in personally. Um, I am viewing it through my marketing lens, and so that's why I'm inserting myself. It's not really a marketing team initiative, but that matters. Because it's not just about like saying Fedora is great, Fedora is great, and then there's a glaring issue and we don't do the work that needs to be done in order to fix it. Now we are, there's, there's a working group, it's a process, and it's more challenging than I can get into right now, but I, as someone who sees marketing as something more than just promotion, um, I need to be aware of what's happening there, and if I need to start nudging or using you know, whatever community connections I have to try to push things in the right direction, that's something that I am interested in in a pursuing. Here it is, <laughs> so public relations. This is uh, another sensitive subject. Sometimes things come up in public discussions that are hard to deal with and you have to know, again, when to say something and how to say it or when to withhold. So the first example I have there is what happened with the rail source RPMs. I'm not making a judgment one way or another. All I'm saying is we did not say anything. And that was on purpose. <laughs> the most that we said from a Fedora standpoint um, was quietly uh, encouraging and being accepting of and enjoying all of our downstreams. And that, that was important. I did check with the Fedora Council. I remember, I, don't, I, never, I wish I took a screenshot, but I did kind of check, like, this is the vibe that we're going for, right? From a Fedora perspective, we're happy for our downstreams. You want to collaborate with them. So as they help us, we help them. End of story. And that's what was reflected in our approach for that. We really needed to bow out of that. And also, to go back to the whole thing of who does Fedora represent, there are people who are very active and love Fedora, who totally understood what Red Hat was doing, and who totally disagreed with what Red Hat was doing. And so for us to unfairly put our foot on the scale in one position or another, no bueno. But then there's another position, like what happened with Fedora Telemetry Episode 1, right? The first go around, you could see, uh, I, I, I hit it with the, the AI one, but that was a situation in which things got very heated. There was a lot of confusion, but we did respond there. And the reason we responded is because there was uh, misunderstandings that we could clarify that did not step on toes and which uh, was valuable, not only in the short term, but in the long term. Things like, for example, folks mapping uh, the habits that we have for dealing with bad news in, in most areas of our lives and then mapping that onto Fedora, right? So when, when a company that you rely on does something you don't like, what can you do? There's not much except get mad on social media. But Fedora doesn't work that way. We have a change process. You have a change proposal. You, you put it out there. It's a get community discussion. Then it goes to FESCO, who is a democratically elected body, and you can do something about it. 
anyone who comes to Fedora to engage is part of the process, and it's totally different, long story short, than just we are coming from on high to do this thing that you don't like. And so that's what we focused on. We focused on educating the community on the fact that it is a change process. And I don't have a lot to point to, but if you look at any Linux YouTuber who covers a Fedora change after this, they say it's a change proposal. Please do not freak out about it. Go look at the discussion and participate there. That's, that's a win as a result of that. I mentioned AI and Fedora because that's the next thing that's coming. I already mentioned it in one discussion that had happened before, um, and, and so I mentioned it now just because uh, from the marketing perspective, we just want to be aware, again, not making a judgment one way or another because this is a very, we are very divided on this issue, but from a marketing perspective, we need to be a, a careful with how we communicate this to, to not freak people out unnecessarily and also to be able to talk about any good that comes from it, from the, you know, whatever we do arrive on. <sighs> okay, what was this other one? Basic media strategy. Okay, so, so the other part of public relations is actually implementing a strategy for reaching out to media outlets. So before we didn't have this, now we do have a rough plan. We were able to put together, well, who are some of the major written media outlets that cover things? Who are some of the Linux YouTubers? And so every so often when we have something big, like Fedora Atomic Desktops or like some other things that I'll cover later on, we now have the ability to give an extra oomph to those announcements. It's not just, hey, we're gonna post it on social media and be done with it. It's not just, we're gonna post on it multiple times, but we try, are able now to put things into circulation um, and get folks talking about it on the news channel so that it sticks. I believe that a big part of the success behind the push for Fedora Atomic Desktops was that added layer of uh, working with media outlets. Um, and also shout out to the Fedora Magazine team because really they're managing that. We do not manage the Fedora Magazine, they do, and so we collaborate with them, we follow their process, and they've been great to work with, so we're grateful for that. Content creation, here's another place where we have to worry about like, oh my gosh, this is something to develop. Um, on one end, it's a tremendous opportunity. Uh, it's, an, it's an opportunity to give a lot of nuanced time to walking through the complicated things that we're doing in Fedora. Um, but it's challenging because video's hard. So most of our content is primarily made up of the talks that we do, right? We're gonna take all of the talks that we did in Flock, for example, we're gonna cut them up into videos, we're gonna make thumbnails, and we're gonna post it out. And when I say we, I probably mean Adrian. So thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Wherever Adrian is, I'm very grateful. He actually, well, credit to him, he, I don't know if it was a release videos or what, but there was something else that we did where he got it out like a day later. It was like a whole, I think it was, maybe it was the, the Fedora Week of Diversity. Uh, the release party, he got it turned around super quick, so that's why I'm, I'm very grateful, but I know that he's competent for that. Uh, but that's every so often. That's only a few times a year that we have those kinds of talks. If the Fedora Council videos start, like, like if the meeting starts turning into some videos, then that's additional content, but otherwise it's hard to come by. So the Fedora podcast, bringing that back was uh, a big thing that we are, are hopefully able to shore up with content. Uh, that's ebbed and flowed. Um, Eric Hendricks, who I mentioned earlier, he runs, uh, I think, one or two shows on the Red Hat side for, where that comes with live streams and I think a podcast component. He was able to bring the podcast out of hiatus and I was able to work with him for coordinating speakers and what have you. Um, life got in the way so it went on hiatus and now it's kind of coming back, but I'll mention the challenge again. Uh, we need to find someone or people with the time, energy, and skills to help the support the Fedora podcast so that it can continue. Because it's, it's uh, I don't have as much time as I hope that I would have for the Fedora podcast, and uh, we can't just have Eric do it on his own. It's not gonna work, that was part of the challenge and part of the reason why I went on hiatus in the first place. So that's something else that we're trying to keep uh, in mind. So we arrive at Mentorship and team stability. The common theme has been it's hard to find people. <laughs> we have had some success with the outreach interns, but that's not going to stick around for a while. I'm going to invite you, uh, Tosin and Rosalind, if you want to stick around to please do so after your outreach internship. And I look into the camera as I say that. Um, I'll, I'll pitch it to you uh, uh, later of why that why I think would be a good idea. But uh, you really, there's no expectation for that. There's no expectation for that. Um, so we need to find a new process. Um, I don't have an answer for this. I'm looking forward to all of the mentor-related talks that happen later uh, during this conference because this is an area that I would really like to shore up. Um, I feel like, unfortunately, it's a, 
a hard combination of skills and desires that we're looking for um, in order to really maximize the value that we can provide to the project from a marketing perspective. Um, and also, I know I have to also adjust my expectations, and so that's where I need feedback to know, Joseph, are you looking for someone who's good and fits this role, or are you looking for another you? Because you maybe won't find another you. And so that's something that I'm also trying to be uh, sensitive to as well. Downstream collaborations. This is uh, very important. This also ties into what we're doing with our um, uh, strategy 2028. Um, from the client perspective, we've talked a lot with Universal Blue and Ultramarine. So shout out again to the Ultramarine team and Noel. I don't know where he's at, but thanks for him. Oh, hey, bud, how are you? Um, that's something that we've actively pursued. I know they've been in, plugged in with the community in other places as well, but from a marketing standpoint, we wanted to make sure we highlight them. Maybe you've seen that we will occasionally post about them or boost their stuff, or we had a big recap article about everything that changed in Fedora Ready, and that we made sure to get their stuff that came out of Fedora 40 also in that article because we want to support them because downstreams are based. Um, so we do a lot of social media engagement, but we also want to uh, invite them into the community more. And so that's looked like the release parties, that's looked like having them here at Flock. And, and thankfully, I'm not the only one who's been supportive of the downstreams. Others in the community have done that as well. And it's great because even they, they work together, right? I'll talk to, the, uh, to Nolan. He's like, oh man, I wish Ultramarine will do this. And then they're like, oh yeah, we want to do that too. So even among our downstreams, there's a lot of collaboration that's happening. And so that's great. On the server side, um, it's mostly just been social media stuff, and that's partly, probably entirely my fault. Um, the reason is because I don't know what SSH is. <laughs> and so it's hard for me to do marketing for uh, distributions that are server-based where they're doing things that I don't fully understand. But um, we are obviously aware of CentOS, Alma, and Rocky. They've been great. Um, and hopefully you've seen and felt like positive vibes emanating between us on social media because Again, like that didn't stop, right? The whole t source RPM thing happened, but we wanted to remain consistent by showing that like, from a Fedora perspective, we're grateful for Alma. From a Fedora perspective, we're grateful for Rocky. And so we want to, yes, we want to make sure that that's um, communicated and valued and that folks see that's happening. This is the one that everyone's got to be excited about, okay? The hardware vendor collaborations. Let's go! <laughs> Fedora Ready! So, uh, Fedora Ready is something that I'm very excited about. It's. Uh, all right, well, uh, that's going to show up a lot. <laughs> but, uh, so, a tentative logo uh, may, not, may not actually happen or, or, or look exactly like that, but um, the program is good to go. We're very excited about it. Um, so, so what's the elevator pitch if I was going to give it to you? Fedora Ready is a promotional program for us, Fedora, to support hardware vendors who support Fedora themselves, right? They are doing so in an official capacity, whether it's by preloading Fedora or by having it as a distribution that is officially supported. Uh, the benefit to vendors is that you get extra support through marketing, promotion, technical collaboration, um, uh, community connections, and when I put their consulting, which is really like listening to users and then relaying a lot of that feedback based on our understanding of that. The benefit to end users is you can find the computers that ship Fedora. Um, sometimes it can be a challenge. You may not know the brand. You may not know where to find it. it you know, for different reasons, it may be um, a, a, an issue. And so we want to make sure that that's easy to find, and not only for the people who already know that these things exist, but for the people who don't know that you can buy a computer with Fedora on it and, and have a good experience with that. Um, so we've already done a lot of things uh, regarding this, and I'll get to it in a bit. But um, We've already been doing collaborations. I have Slimbook here as an example. We've done two product launches. There was the original uh, Slimbook Fedora and then the Slimbook Fedora 2. The Slimbook Fedora 2, we came in with a bigger splash um, that involved things like writing the initial announcement, working with Red Hat to do like a newswire, then doing our own announcement blog post, the social media, the podcast, all that type of support. Um, with other teams, we've connected them to the Fedora quality team, where maybe they didn't have those relationships to make it easier for them to talk with um, like Adam Williamson and such and have um, easy access to them, uh, dedicated space for them to hash out those things. And, and so those are things that we want to make sure that we're continuing to develop. The Fedora compatibility list is something that is, it, it exists. If you look it up in our documentation, it's there. Uh, we finally moved it over to Fedora Doc so that it's no longer living in like Fedora discussion. Uh, when that's going to be the main thing where we're going to like say like, hey, do you want to 
computer that runs Fedora that you could buy it and it already has it, that's what we're going to point you to for the time being. And Rosalind, she's the one who's been driving so much of what's happened in Fedora already. We gave her a lot of direction, and she's helped us push it out the door. So we're very grateful to her for that. And besides that, I mentioned the regular social media posts. So every so often, like Mark, for example, will let us know, hey, here's a, here's a, a new ThinkPad that just came online. You can buy it with Fedora now. Boop, we're posting about it. When Damar was doing it, he had graphics for us, and boom, we'd post it with graphics, and it would make the rounds. It'd get triple digits in terms of engagements on Mastodon. And so um, that's been great. Um, that's really what, what, what led to the inception of trying to formalize this into a program. Um, the reason we wanted to do it as a program was because we were already doing all of those things, but we wanted to put it under one brand, under one umbrella, to make it easier for us to reach out to new vendors. So if we wanted to reach out to a Dell or a Tuxedo or a System76, we have an easy way to talk about all the things that we have done for vendors and that we may do for them in the future. Uh, but it's also valuable because it makes it easy to find the Fedora preloads if you're looking for them. You don't have to think, you know, you know, some folks may not know that preloads is like a thing to look for. If they're struggling to find the Fedora computers, if we can get the word out about Fedora Ready, just look up Fedora Ready. Whenever you want to buy a computer that has Fedora, you want to be able to send that to someone else, and they will now more easily find the information. And the name itself, I, what I was trying to find originally was how can I find something that's easy to do a hashtag around? Because imagine it's like any time you're wondering if when we post about like, hey, here's a new ThinkPad that's got Fedora on it. We can do hashtag Fedora ready. And for all of time, you could look up hashtag Fedora ready and you can find what you're looking for. And, and obviously that rule applies more generally to um, just looking up information for these devices. You can look up Fedora ready. Oh, that's all you have to know. And then you're going to find your way. And so we're very excited about that because it, um, it, it just brings all of that together, and we hope that it's the next step in terms of uh, the value that we can provide to the vendors and also to our end users. So um, the folks who are in it are the folks who we have been talking with already. Um, Rosalind had put together a survey where she shared, hey, here's what we have in terms of formalizing what this program looks like, and the response um, was very positive and constructive from each of the vendors, so we're super grateful for that. Um, there was a vendor who's not on this list who found out about Fedora Ready and we hadn't even announced it yet. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. But they reached out <laughs> and so we're grateful for them and we're, we're talking with them to, to, to see what we can do in terms of collaborating. Um, in terms of the short term, we want to make sure that we're taking care of the folks that we're uh, currently collaborating with. Um, the idea is not to like launch this and then start reaching out to random people when we haven't really built um, the foundation that we want to build with the vendors who we're currently working with. And so obviously if a vendor reaches out, we're not going to say no, probably, but we're not going to be actively pursuing other folks when there's work to be done with the, the folks that we are working with currently. We want to make sure that they're taken care of. Um, and so going from there, you know, let's, let's talk about dreams a little bit. Um, we want to have a page on the main website that lists uh, some of the, if uh, a certain group of the devices that uh, support Fedora. So if, if there's a machine out there that can, that, that comes with Fedora preloaded, we want to list that on the website. If there's a machine that officially supports Fedora, we want to list it on the website. There's a big long list of devices that f formerly so, you know, were, were available for sale, for example, but now they're no longer available for sale. But obviously, if you, um, uh, if you, if you pick it up or you buy it used, you can still get it. Or I know in, in the Nova's case, they have a great list, and we've, we've transferred some of that over. Um, devices where maybe you want to buy something used, or maybe it runs Ubuntu, and it's like, look, there's a good shot that it'll run Fedora as well. We have guidelines around what that looks like, but. Uh, long story short, we want to get the, the things that are like available right now for you to buy that run Fedora on the main website and then everything else that would be more what I consider Fedora friendly but not really like ready for you to buy, that will remain in, in Fedora documentation. Um, besides that, we want to then use Fedora Ready to explore marketing opportunities outside of the Linux community, right? The idea is like the Linux community is great, but from a needle-moving perspective, we need to get out of, of our bubble, and so this is an opportunity to do that. Um, personally, I, I don't, this is, we're in the dream zone, so I can say this, uh, uh, explore what we can do with handhelds. 
We have no connections based on this, right? So I'm not saying that there's anything in the works. There's nothing in the works. Uh, but clearly, the Steam Deck has proven that you can have a commercially successful device that is running Linux, and it's running something that is very close to the Linux that we use every day. So that's an opportunity I'd like to explore. I'd like to go deeper with current vendors and get new vendors. And then my personal goal, um, I don't know what this will look like in the future necessarily, but so whatever the equivalent of this is, that's what I'm shooting for. I would like for someone to be able to walk into a Best Buy and buy a Linux device. That's probably, uh, you know, Mount Everest times two. I don't know, but that's what I'm shooting for. And so, you know, the closer that we can get to that is uh, what I'm trying to do with uh, Fedora Ready, or, or what we're trying to do as the marketing team. So um, that's it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And um, I don't know how much time we have for, oh, 20 ish minutes? Uh we have or a little less. 14 minutes. OK, so Q&A time. Q &A time. All right. What, what do you we want to talk about? We have one there, one there. Mine's not a question. I just want to say thank you for this presentation and for all the amazing work you've put in. Um, and you know, the others on the marketing team as well. Uh, but, um, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it's, it. It's really been great and had a, had a lot of impact, I think. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, you mentioned uh, Blue Sky earlier and wanting to explore that, and I thought I'd bring up, uh, we've been on Blue Sky for a couple months now, and we have like actively good engagements on the Fediverse you've probably seen. But on Blue Sky, we have 20 followers and get zero likes on most of our posts. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if Blue Sky really has a Linux community or if we're just not using it right. Okay. Um, but we don't get many engagements. Okay. Thank you. I, I appreciate that feedback. That extra insight definitely will help in, in weighing that. It's not an urgent decision to make either, but um, yeah, it's kind of where we're at with that one. All right. More questions? Okay. <laughs> what inspired you to get involved and do the things in the marketing team that you have done? Like, did you imagine it was going to, your journey was gonna take you here? Or like, what, you know, what was your, uh, your pathway into all of this? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't, definitely didn't think that I would get this far in terms of how, how involved I am, but I'm, I'm grateful that I, that I am. Um, I think that a lot of my motivation comes from somewhat, it's, I guess somewhat selfishly, I think it's really cool. Um, when we did the, the Fedora Week of Diversity, I mentioned in my post that um, growing up, I was like, oh man, like if I could work for Google, if I could work for like the company that makes cool software that I love to use, that'd be so cool. That's like the dream job. Um, and I'm not like that smart. So I thought I could never get into that kind of, 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 of company. I thought it was too high. But open source, among all the other values, which I'm very grateful for, you know, with open source being so powerful and a social good and all those things, it was also like an open invitation to just like waltz into, you know, a, a Google equivalent. Like it, in my mind, it's like you mean I could just show up and I could start doing like the product designy, brand managementy, businessy things that I that I would like to do. Uh, that's awesome because now I, I can like have an impact in the tools and, and things that I enjoy using and that I think are worth sharing with other folks. Um, but then on the other end, um, I think the reason that I have, have been maybe so motivated to be this involved is because I think that this is an opportunity. Um, I didn't cover this at all, and, and maybe this will come up in other conversations when it comes to mentorship, but, um, and also I say this with trepidation, so please like don't take it the wrong way, but I think that there's an opportunity for people who are maybe business-minded or more of uh, like qualitative skills in mind to, to be involved in open source. Um, someone like me who, who, who'd be interested in like, you know, they're, they're kind of bringing business acumen to open source to help make some decisions. Um, I think that's valuable for some of the skills that really live on the business world that sometimes don't translate, right? It, I'm grateful for everyone who listened, but um, you know, I don't know if, you know, if, if you're likely to be interested in wanting to manage a social media account at the level that I do. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm interested in that. And I think that uh, that's an opportunity, 
you know, how many open source projects could benefit from having someone who's very interested in marketing specifically and then wanting to market their, um, you know, that specific open source project. I think that's an opportunity. I have ideas on how that could happen, but I don't have the time to implement them. Um, and, and so I, I, I would hate to see open source languish because folks just don't know about it when, when really it's, it's so great and, and the opportunity and, and power of it is so um, significant that it, it would be a shame for folks to not know about it. So uh, that's, that's why I, I'm, I'm involved like that. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate the question. All right, oh, okay, more, two more questions. You can ask about anything, and if you want to ask about Mastodon, I'm happy to talk about Mastodon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I find that recruiting people into a marketing group in an open source project is very, very hard because people don't like the word marketing. What have you done to get that many people involved and how can I use the same pattern? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I mean, I will say two of the names listed were outreach interns, so they, actually they get paid to do this, I don't get paid to do this. <laughs> um, but, but putting that aside, I mean, in the case of Damar, he actually approached in a similar way to me where he thought like, I see a marketing need. And so he wanted to get involved. Um, I think Eric, um, for his part, he was also he's involved. I think everyone who's come has come as a result of, of seeing this as a need. And so I wonder if it was just a matter of having someone who was already in position to catch those folks who were interested, uh, who understood what the job was to be done and could you know, successfully you know, move them along to connect them, right? I think that, I mentioned it briefly, but that being a community liaison has been such an, immort an important part of how I've been able to add value to the project, right? Like facilitating things like the help wanted post for Fedora Cosmic and knowing who to talk to, knowing who to link up for what. Um, for Fedora Atomic, I think was a similar boat. Um, a lot of, it uh, hasn't been a lot of value add, but for, for the Ultramarine folks and for Ublue to be able to, for Ublue maybe I'll share like, hey, here's an announcement that just dropped that's relevant for you guys, or um, you know, hey, here's someone who you may want to talk to to get a certain thing going. If you're there as a community liaison to catch them, then at least that's, that's one way to make sure that someone who's thinking about that may not want to like, leave, but actually like land and stay. Um, besides that, trying to like, actively be like, hey, you know, like contribute through marketing because it's important that I, I'm, I'm still working on that because I do think, like you're saying, I think people have a negative perception of what marketing is. If you throw around too many businessy terms, they're, they're turned off to it. Um, uh, within the open source world, it does have, it can have like negative connotations across many different <laughs> beliefs. So um, I haven't solved that problem. My hope is that the work that we're doing in the Fedora marketing team can serve it as an, as an example of the, the positive and honest impact that you could have um, when you focus on this in the right way, in a way that's connected to the project and also connected to the values, right? This is not just about making number go up. This is about the four foundations go first and then we do marketing from there. So, but that's also a work in progress for me, so. Um, this is uh, not really a question, just more of a thought I just had, um, and, and maybe a request. Uh, when I started at Red Hat in 2005, we still had new hire orientation, and uh, I went to new hire orientation, and kind of each department came and gave a pitch about what they did, and marketing came in, and they explained, you know, this is what we do, and this and the other, and they had stuff to give to everyone, and they gave us two little decks of, they almost looked like Magic the Gathering cards. Ooh, all that right. They up. <laughs> and there was, there was a black deck and a red deck, and the, and the black ones contained information that we weren't allowed, we, we, they wanted everyone to know, but we couldn't share that with the public. The red cards, were printed up like little elevator pitches. Mm. They said, if you go to a conference, if you're in public and someone says, oh, you work for Red Hat, hey, tell me about this, and it's something you don't work on, you have that little answer very mm. qu quickly. And I thought, 
I, I, you know, sitting through this, I was like, wow, that would be really handy for us and, and Fedora, those of us that are not involved in a particular area and someone asks us about it, if we had like the talking points, you know, that we could reference, I thought that would be, you know, really useful. So we yeah. all have a consistent voice. But I don't know, that, that was just my, my idea, not really a question. No, th th thank you for that. I think, I, I know Justin has raised a similar point about um, maybe having um, uh, more broad talking points um, of, of different things to be able to talk about. I think it came up in the context of ambassadors, but I think it can be applied more generally. Um, the thinking actually behind, um, it, it's weird, I don't, I'm not actively thinking about it, but it is always in the back of my mind. The idea behind the Mastodon is not only the um, immediate education of whoever happens to read those posts, but also to make it something that you'd be interested in boosting. Um, so that in effect, it is, um, it is it, you know, similar to that of, um, I don't know a lot about this, but I've just been informed by it because I get this regular you know, dose of, of information from the Mastodon account, so it keeps me somewhat informed of, of other things that are happening in the project. Um, but also we want to make it something that's like easy for you to want to share. And so when I think about the timing of, of, of what we post, I think about like how it is that we're writing that copy, um, all in the context of, I want to make this something that people are want, gonna want to boost, they're gonna feel okay boosting, they're not gonna feel awkward about it, um, uh, to make it as shareable as possible. Um, so uh, that is something that uh, we, we try to keep in mind. But. I also appreciate that feedback, and I think that'll link up with, with Justin's take on having broader talking points for folks who want to uh, be more active in their uh, advocacy. All right. Um, more questions? Oh, maybe one more. <laughs> That's probably the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, the the door already is awesome. Yes, um, yes it is, thank you. <laughs> but it does make me think though, I, I think I remember hearing that in the Windows world, a lot of, at least some manufacturers put a lot of trialware on, on, on a preload, preload a lot of trial software on their, on their machines that they sell to the point where it's actually a revenue center for them. Um, and one of the reasons I like installing, wiping away Windows is to get rid of all that. Have, have you had any manufacturers come to you and say, we want to be able to do that on Fedora as well? Do we have any policies about what additional software manufacturers are and aren't allowed to install on Fedora laptop, uh, Fedora ready machines? Do we want a policy like that? Or do we want to let the manufacturers make their own decisions. Thank you, so that's a very good question and that has actually um, something that has come up, not in the context of, well actually somewhat in the context of folks wanting to add something, but not to the degree to what you're sharing of someone wanting like, hey, here's like a Dell that you could buy and it's got like Chrome and like Candy Crush on it. <laughs> it, it has not been to that, to that degree. Um, but as part of using the Fedora trademark, you have to ship Fedora Workstation unmodified. Um, that there is a little bit of nuance to that, but basically it has to be the exact same workstation that you would get as if you were to install it yourself on the computer. And so there's, there's no concern with, with that piece. Um, I'll also add to kind of give a little, it's reflected in our documentation, but I didn't get into it here. I, I, I wanna emphasize that this is a promotional program and not a certification program or, or something like that because there are several reasons for why it's not those things. Um, but really what's happened is that these are vendors who they started shipping Fedora in line with those uh, trademark guidelines already. Um, even the first Slimbook came out before I even thought, hey, let's collaborate with folks, uh, the, 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 Slimbook, the first Slimbook Fedora. And so um, they've already been doing it like this where it's just been regular old vanilla workstation. And um, we are really relying on them and their own reputation, their own testing, as well as like a little bit of like, you know, due diligence, even though some don't really, I don't think any of them really require it at this point. But anywho, that, that is part of our documentation of having a little bit of due diligence, but it is primarily something where we're, we're relying on the vendor. If they say, hey, this is good and ready and it ships Fedora, and we have the level of trust to where we're willing to boost it, then, then we will. If not, then it, it may just exist on its own, right? There, there are, you know, Folks who may ship Fedora, we don't really talk about it because it doesn't really align with what we're trying to do as, as our, our newly defined strategy under the program. Uh, but really, the Lenovo framework and Slimbook are all like 
yeah, it's, it's Fedora Workstation, and we don't really touch it besides that. <laughs> I have had someone who took one of our Fedora preloaded systems and actually checked that it was just Fedora. As it is, we have documents in Opt Lenovo, but that's it. And yeah, I've had one person check it, and it was good. <laughs> it was good. And this, that was Mark Pearson. He he's, uh, uh, works for Linux support at Lenovo, and we're very grateful for him. Okay. All right. Uh, you want to continue? That's it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. So we are running out of time. So thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, it fell asleep. That's right. Thank you. <laughs>